Hello and welcome back to The Fun Reborn. Today we have a more exciting video than last time. Uh, the Cleric Beast video is a little sparse. Uh, Cleric Beast himself does not himself does not give you a lot to work with. Uh, it's a pattern in this series that you'll have bosses that have very distinct identities and bosses that are very abstracted. The Cleric Beast is an abstract. Father Gasquin, who will be fighting today, is a very specific entity. Uh, you can continue on further and find that pattern. The Blood Starved Beast after, uh, compared to Vicar Amelia, for example. But because we have a very specific character today, we have considerably more to talk about. We're going to start with something a little different. We're going to go back to the beginning of the game. Because something is there that um, has some use later on. <laughs> and not actually the item. I never use the item. It just sits in your inventory the entire game. I know it's the last boss, but I might run out of mega elixirs. Gotta conserve. Alright. So. Here we are back in Yosefka's clinic. And we go up. And knock on the door. Are you out on the hunt? Figuratively. Then I'm very sorry, but I cannot open this door. I am Yosefka. The patients here in my clinic must not be exposed to infection. I know that you hunt for us, for our town, but I'm sorry. Please. This is all that I can do. All right, so we have Yosefka's blood vial. And the first thing to point out is the way that it's worded. It's not Yosefka's blood, it's her blood vial. Uh, future bloods in the game will be the blood of so-and-so. Um, this suggests that, you know, she's not giving you her blood. Also, this window pattern gets repeated on later on. Um, it's to keep in mind that when you have very distinct eye-catching moments like this, and you see them repeated, that's a possibility that they mean something. It's... Anyway. <laughs> so, the blood vial. Let's take a look at it. The one thing to point out is that Unlike mm, virtually all of the blood in the game, this is not red. Uh, I've ha had someone bring up to me the possibility that what she has here is not blood per se, but rather blood serum, uh, blood that has been removed of various other things. I don't have the science on in front of me. I do have notes for this, I just can't see them where I have my PlayStation recording. Anyway, the blood vial is potentially serum, and what would, uh, and what is a serum used for? Well, as we know with COVID right now, you can use serum to pass on antibodies. The reason her patients can't get infected is because if they get infected, they, well, actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, she's trying to keep her science clean. Untainted, as it were. So, we got the blood vial, we talked a little about Yusefka. I hope I haven't skipped anything. We're gonna go back to Central Yarnum. Uh, I should be setting stuff up during the loading screens, but, you know, I don't really have anything at the moment. Um, but we've got the Yusefka vial. <laughs> my notes were here, it would be so much easier. Alright. Um, multiple ways we could go to our next location. I'm gonna take just the starter typical run. Why am I fighting? One of the interesting things about this game is how it's designed so that 
certain areas will cause fall damage unless you pick out the right path. The idea that you can carefully descend to avoid fall damage is a pretty cool one. We make through the uh, crucifixion square and to the fountain, past the shrine of the silver monkey. All right, so we have to do this fight. I promise it's for a reason. Yeah, come on, I don't want to go all in. Okay, I'm going all in. I went all in. Now things are fine. Anyway. Came here for one particular reason, something that I didn't point out because I never really noticed it. But they're extracting what looks to be blood vials, perhaps blood con uh, pungent blood cocktails, from the well system. You have other indications of water uh, here with the uh, pump. Wow. You are so annoying. I'm talking here. Come on. Jesus, I hate that. <laughs> uh... You'll notice me trying to use items I don't have because I've just been playing Dark Souls 3. Anyway, we've got the well. They're extracting blood from it. We've got the water pump. And something I thought I would bring up later, but I'm going to now. We have sandbags. Sandbags could be used for a military fortification. They've got a lot of guns hiding behind them, would make sense, but I don't recall ever seeing an enemy use it like that. There might be an example that I've just forgotten. Uh, but sandbags would be useful if you were dealing with, say, floodwaters. Just a thing to keep in mind. But here is what we really came for. So there's something there that I've never noticed before, but is actually really, really fascinating. Um, we know from this description that her dad is almost certainly Gascoigne. Um, and it's going to be something we use shortly. What's funny, though, is that she doesn't recognize your voice, but she recognizes your smell. Um, this kind of calls back to, in one case, um, I believe Shinalakor, <laughs> I might be mispronouncing that from uh, Dark Souls 2, always talking about your curious scent, but it could also refer back to the, um, the variant fight in Dark Souls 1, where if you do the DLC first, uh, Sif recognizes your smell. <laughs> That's interesting. So, this one's a very strange uh, fellow. He has a weapon that is unlike most of the ones here, and he has dialogue. 
but I don't know that I want to wait around and hear it all, so... That weapon is bizarre. It's a statue. <laughs> okay, I finally made out what it is. Um, that is peculiar. I do not have a good answer for that. Uh, there's also this weird thing where if I'm not... I have no idea what that light is. I think it might correspond to the area we met Eileen that has a very strange light inside of some of the sandbags there. But that is another thing that perplexes me. But he has a statue. <laughs> you learn stuff new every time. All right, so this section's going to be fun. As I've pointed out in other videos, and we have a sort of mirroring here. We've got two aqueduct systems that each uh, outlet into this. And in both of them, you have an item you can fall down to that is on the platform up there. We got it previously in uh, the first episode of this of Bloodborne, but it was where that corpse is. And there's a similar one, a mirroring of it up there. You could almost, in fact, see it. Uh, actually, I actually think you can see it the little bit right there. So from here, we see the two mirrored positions. What's noteworthy is that this aqueduct is built to a smaller scale. I say that because if you fall onto this wooden platform and then jump down, you take no fall damage. Whereas if you jump down from that wooden platform, you do take fall damage. This is kind of suggestive that we're dealing in Central Yarnum with not one, but two separate civilizations, and that one is smaller than the other. These are intriguing features. Uh, we have a pit of corpses. This is, I think, reminiscent of the end of New Londo flushing all of the corpses down the drain. This becomes sort of the drain, the sewer, where it all clogs. We've got a couple side passages. None of them lead to anything. I wouldn't be surprised if they were relevant, though, in some way, but I don't have answers for that right now. I'm not going to make you sit through me wondering. So, I should be running. This is unfair to you. Uh, we have this sort of we have, in fact, an enemy that we can kind of see down the road. We're not going to go there yet. But what I want to mention is that for the future, in like five to ten minutes, hopefully, if you have summoned Gascoigne and you approach this sewer, he will silencing bell or whatever. I don't PvP in this. So uh, he will use his item to leave and break the summon chain. He will not go into that sewer. And that's sort of fascinating based on uh, what we'll see shortly. This is uh, the shortcut I am unlocking. It has a safety strap. I don't think I will lose the gas coin. It's usually pretty clean at this point, but um, it's so much harder to play this when I'm trying to think about what I want to talk about more so than what I'm playing. I get kind of wrapped up, as you may have told at this point. All right, so we've got this particular little... <laughs> that ball gets a lot of people who are playing for the first time. What? Uh, there's probably lots of things that one could say about that, trying to compare it to Sun Fortress or the start of Dark Souls 1 in the West, uh, in the Northern Undead Asylum. But what I want to point out is that they give you two sections to dodge the ball. It will never come in here. Um, as though the ball is forced, is there to force you to consider them. And that bridge up there that we fought, uh, Cleric Beast, has the same uh, architectural structure. It has the same... Uh, outcroppings. And I think that could be something that has, uh, that could be intentional. I, I suspect it kind of is. Um, and it's sort of like the, uh, the wooden platforms that I just showed you, that they are structured in such a way as to draw your attention to the fact that their heights are different 
which is an important piece of information if you're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, there's a lot of synchronicity in these games, but then what can be most important is the parts that ought to match but don't. Anyway, what's that smell? It's a very, uh, primate-looking mouth. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, I prefer to fight Gasquin up on the stairway. He doesn't handle stairs especially well, but currently he's stuck on a... <sighs> there we go. Uh, that... <laughs> I don't always handle stairs well myself. I don't want to be up. I want to be down. Oh dear. Oh, I... <laughs> I tried to heal. Um, this is not good. What did I tell you about trying to talk? Anyway, that... that... axe grind that he does... Very reminiscent of Artorias. I think, um... It's been a while, um, but it also gets replicated later on by a patient in the uh, the research hall. Don't worry if you don't know what that is, but it's always worth it to pay attention to parallels like that. Wanted to do is use the magic the box in this section. It's going to be less effective now. But this is by far the most dangerous section. Anyway, that was messy, but fine. I'll accept it. Get the Oyden Tune key. We'll be using that shortly. We'll look at it shortly, but I want to focus right now on this other bit. Viola's not doing so hot. Um, yeah. Having found Viola, uh, I want to go back. <laughs> I should probably get the lamp. This will be important to have later. Her being up there on the building as you enter kind of makes this arena almost a parallel of the Scorpioness arena in Dark Souls 2. Scorpioness has this weird tree in around the same area that has a flame, butterf flame butterfly on it and only and you can only get it if she knocks the tree down and I feel like that's reminiscent of this section. Anyway, we have the poor girl's um, mother's brooch and we might as well go tell her what has happened. There are other options that you can do with the brooch. Uh, you can get a gem from it. I don't particularly care and this one I think is the most storyline revealing. I don't want to deal with that bird at the entrance. I really don't want to deal with these guys, but that'll be fine. Look how small this side is compared to that side. <laughs> it's such, an, such a revealing feature.
Okay, so we have the gem and we're going to bring it back. I suppose I should look at it before. No, I did look at it, didn't I? No, I looked at the music box. Nothing too interesting on that one. We're also done with the music box, so we can remove it from our inventory. So to progress the quest, we need to quit out. You can do other methods, but this is going to be the fastest one for our purposes. I also want to mention a parallel right now while we're doing some loading of the music box to the Malcontent Ring in Sekiro. I don't have, I don't remember Sekiro well enough to make that case at the moment. But I think there's some interesting parallels between the two that maybe answer something about the story of the King of Fisher. <laughs> the Sekiro playthrough, once we actually get to it, is going to be sort of the first time I've applied most of this to Sekiro, so that's going to be an interesting challenge. It is by far the game that I know the least of. Anyway, by logging out, we've uh, progressed her um, quest line. She, the light is gone, she's left. No response. And we now can try to find out where she got off to. Mm. I won't bother babbling to fill in dead space, this is just going to be a fairly short run. We have the Maneater Boar. A inclusion here kind of suggests that it feasts on the corpses that we saw out there. get some blood files, but it has a second item, the red messenger ribbon. The thick, pungent red was drawn from organs of some unfortunate victim. A strange choice indeed, but perhaps the messengers wear this wearing this accessory, perhaps for the messengers, wearing this accessory constitutes a form of mourning. This suggests that the girl tried to make it out on her own, and um, that was less than successful. We also have here the Saw Hunter badge, and just a cold blood too. Um, this being the presumed resting spot of the girl makes it very intriguing that Gascoigne won't enter here, as though in some sort of grander cosmic sense he knew he knows what happened and can't bear to see it um oh while we're on this ladder there's a second item that we did get and i want to talk about that for a little bit the workshop is gone no group recognizes this meaningless badge except the messengers in the bath who understand its profundity and if you're trying to guess what the profundity of this is in terms of just the visual graphic, and I believe FromSoft puts a lot of effort into their visual graphics, there's two sort of things that I could interpret it as. The first is a jaw. Um, the serrated weapons in this game tend to have uh, toothy marks, and this kind of looks like a long snout. 
Uh, but the second thing is that if you look at it in a certain light, it almost looks like a caterpillar climbing up something with the little, uh, with the little teeth being legs. Those are my guesses as to the profundity. I don't know that the messengers will ever tell me if I'm right or not, but where would the fun in that be? Oh, one last bit. This is a somewhat an Oh, he's gonna come up. Okay, no, good. Somewhat annoying fight part. Uh, these two guys have a saw cleaver in a sense and a saw spear. Uh, of course, there's no saw to them, but they're a cleaver and a spear, which is maybe symbolic. I can't say for sure, but it's intriguing because the saw cleaver and the saw spear are two of the weapons in this game that are not really attached to anyone in particular. They're just there. And the saw uh, hunter badge is an item that gives us the ability to buy all of the starting items that we didn't unlock which includes the saw cleaver, and we found the saw spear earlier in the uh, boat room. The last thing I want to mention about this particular area is this circular, relatively circular pattern of gravestones is peculiar. Um, typically, cemeteries would not have, uh, have their uh, bodies positioned in such a way. What I think this is supposed to be invocative of is the idea of a mushroom circle. I say that because I think there's a parallel in this game between uh, tombstones and mushrooms in that the mushroom is what decomposes the corpse and turns it into something new and useful. Okay, with that said, we have Some interesting architecture stuff I don't really have anything to add about. There's also um, these fireflies, which I or, or pollen, which I think is particular to this room. So let's talk about Leiden. We use the key to open this, and there's a question here of. Well, there isn't really much of a question. This is presumably. Oedin's tomb, and this is his chapel, um, but it could work the other way around. It's one of those things that it's best to leave as an open question. Uh, don't presume that you know the answer because you kind of shut out other possibilities, but the key. Beyond the tomb, Oedin chapel can be found, which kind of suggests my initial interpretation, so maybe that does, that, that one's actually decided perhaps, in the center of the cathedral ward. Only today the church is abandoned, and some say the residents of Leiden have all gone mad. So what's really fascinating about this description is residents of Leiden. Um, he's always described in other uh, places as sort of a god. Uh, we find stuff about formless Leiden, uh, but this is a place that has residents. You could assume that it applies to residents of the Leiden chapel. We don't usually talk about oh, in chapel have uh, chapels having residents it's usually more of a city type thing but you could say that the question then would be if the church is abandoned how can residents of the oaden church go mad um <laughs> i suppose you could say it's abandoned because they've all gone mad and left and abandoned it that is perhaps you know a ter perfectly reasonable interpretation but the wording of this is funny, and it's worth considering keeping in mind funny wordings. We have a very narrow passageway here, and this is extremely peculiar. A chapel for a tomb would usually have a very standard connection to one another, but here we enter through the sewers. It's a room that's pretty evocative of a lot of places in Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 3, various other ones. Um, you would kind of expect rats to be coming out of the sides here. We also have a bit of foreshadowing with uh, the chair. 
Some of you will know what I'm talking about, others will not. It's fine. The anticipation is part of the fun. We go from a sewer with a very, through a very interesting passage. Uh, this structure is kind of replicated other parts in this game, and I think possibly Dark Souls 2, but I'd have to go back and check on it. Um, we expect to enter a chapel, and what we enter is more of like a scholarly area. Uh, there's often a coding in this series between areas of research and areas of religion, and this blends the both of them with a with a sewer entrance to start with. So those kind of strange transitional areas are always something to keep an eye out on. We have some foreshadowing about Bergenworth and the Bergenworth spider. Not a lot to say about this right now, but keep it in mind. And finally we have Blood Gem Workshop Tool. A misplaced workshop tool from the Hunter's Dream. The hunter who retrieves this can fortify weapons by kneading blood gems into them. Blood gems add properties to weapons when used to fortify them, as blood defines an organi organism. Whew. Organism. Yes. So, what's I think perhaps interesting in this wording is that uh, if blood defines the organism, what is the organism? The p creature that you got the blood from, or the weapons that you are adding them to? And that may seem like an obvious answer, but given some of the weapons we get later on, it might not be quite so obvious. Um, we have our requisite spiral staircase, mercifully short. I think they learned that longer ones kind of get old. And we have the door opening, the threshold crossing. I mentioned Yosefka's clinic having that distinct uh, red window, and we see it re replicated in a cutscene. Um, we have a statue over there that it uh, homes in on, and that statue has a peculiar design. Um, it's like they're trying to attract our attention to certain features. I believe that's something they most certainly do at various points in this game. But starting where we began, we have now the Alpha and the Omega. Um, and we are going to go back to the dream. This is where we'll pick up next time. But we're not completely done. There are, I believe, two things we want to talk about in the dream. <laughs> the doll going missing. Um, and Garamin comes back. Neither of those things are the ones that I want to talk about, <laughs> incidentally. The moon is close. It will be a long hunt tonight. If the beasts loom large and threaten to crush your spirits, seek a holy chalice, as every hunter before you has. A holy chalice will reveal the tomb of the gods, where hunters partake in communion. Most of the holy chalices lie deep within the tomb of the gods. And the few that found their way to the surface were lost again in the hands of men. But if the old hunter tales remain true, one of the holy chalices is worshipped in the valley hamlet. Yet the town is in disarray. It was burned and abandoned for fear of the scourge. Home now only to beasts. The perfect place for a hunter, wouldn't you say? Ah. So. Foreshadowing for next time. Um, 
next time we come back to Bloodborne, there are some Dark Souls that we'll be doing in between that and then. But we have our Red Messenger weapon, so... One thing noteworthy about this uh, particular one is that only one of them gets to wear the ribbon. All of the other things you add are shared amongst them. Uh, the non-wearing... The ones that do not have the ribbon seem to have bloody heads instead. But, you know, they can have their mourning. After all, isn't that what we're looking for? Mourning? Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? Maria returning to this grave is something that has Over relevance, but have visited this dream. we will talk about that much later. Memory. It all seems so long ago now. The idea that it seems long ago to her is interesting. Uh, I haven't thought about it that. Sorry, sometimes I'm discovering my own things. Uh, we got the Saw Hunter badge, and now we have a third little dude. This one is in the back holding the uh, green jar. Our little messenger community is getting more and more elaborate. The final thing is that by defeating Gascoigne, we have acquired the rights to purchase his gear. Which, you know, for the sake of uh, roleplay, I think I will. Gotta keep that frenzy down, right? comes in handy uh, in some of the upcoming coming sections. Having done that, similar to Hunter Garb created at the workshop, only these are tainted by a pungently beastly stench, a pungent beastly stench that eats away at Gascoin. Father is a title used for clerics in a foreign land, and there is no such rank in the Healing Church. This uh, marks Gascoigne as a foreigner to Yarnum, similar to yourself, and it also implies the existence of multiple different healing churches, since various uh, people will recognize the outfit and misinterpret it as from, uh, being from, or maybe correctly interpret it, depending on the perspective. But it's worth it to keep in mind that, you know, the idea of foreigners is something that is very important in this game. Having said that, uh, we will be returning to Dark Souls 1 next time to finish off the first age and ring the first bell. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, may you find your worth in the waking world.